guys, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl, Miss Fighting Fiercely, and today we're going to be talking about endometriosis fatigue and vitamin C deficiency. Is there a difference? Are they linked? Are they connected? And if they are, how so? And what does that mean for you? If you're finding my channel for the very first time, welcome. Thank you so much for stopping by. This is Fighting Fiercely, the space where we educate, enlighten, and empower about all things endometriosis. If you like what you see by the end of this video, please be sure to like and subscribe down below. Share this video with other endo peeps so that they can be educated, enlightened, and empowered as well. Don't forget to click the notification button so you can be notified whenever I upload new content. So let's get into it. Endo fatigue, what the heck is that? So you guys have endometriosis and my um, adenomyosis peeps as well. You guys know that chronic fatigue is indeed a legitimate thing, right? No matter how much sleep you get at night, no matter how long you sleep, how many naps you take during the day, you just always find yourself very tired from doing everyday run-of-the-mill tasks from doing laundry, washing dishes, brushing your teeth, even taking a shower can be exhaustive. And while we've talked about it and discussed it in communities, we know that it's a thing. Um, I don't think I've ever talked about like why it's a thing, the legitimacy of it, and what can cause or attribute to it. And is it something that we just have to deal with? So let's just go back a little bit. Um, and talk about just defining endo fatigue and you know what the heck is it so you know I got to bring my receipts you guys um, so according to medical news today right as we all know one of the most common symptoms of endometriosis and adeno is the heavy bleeding the large blood clots the blood clots and you know the copious amounts of blood that we lose which often leads to anemia which is indicated by low iron levels and because of that we often have the fatigue that ensues from it <clears throat> excuse me and according to medical news today hold on you guys sorry about that so but according to medical news today there is research that specifically links endometriosis to chronic fatigue syndrome, which is technically the name, you know, for endo fatigue. It has also been found that chronic fatigue syndrome is more common in women than in men, and women who have these particular issues are more likely to have chronic fatigue syndrome. Those issues are endometriosis is the first one listed, ovarian cysts, irregular periods, as well as pelvic pain. And we know that all of those things go together when you're dealing with endometriosis and adenomyosis. And they go on to talk about how fatigue is much different than regular, I'm just tired, right? You feel excessively weak. Your energy levels are excessively low. And some of the other indicators of fatigue versus just regular tiredness is you may also have muscle or joint pains or achiness. You may experience headaches, insomnia, difficulty concentrating and remembering. We talked about endo brain, endo fog. That's also a thing. You may also have flu-like symptoms, dizziness, and sometimes nause um, nausea. You can get, you know, dizzy or lightheaded when you go from standing to sitting. Or I know for me, sometimes even doing the dishes, I've had to stop and pause and sit and take a break and then come back to it a little bit later. And I'm sure, I know I have personally experienced several of those symptoms, which I'm sure a lot of you ladies have as well. But there was something very interesting that I found from the Endo Found um, Endometriosis Foundation of America. We've talked about endo fatigue, we know it's a thing, but very rarely have we ever heard it specifically defined as it relates to endometriosis. And so when I came across this definition, I thought that it was very interesting. And so I wanted to share it with you guys. So what does the Endometriosis Foundation of America say about chronic fatigue, specifically as it relates to endometriosis? So they say, the main cause of endometriosis related fatigue is the body's effort to eliminate the diseased tissue. While the immune system attempts to combat endometriosis, a process or toxins called cytokines 
um, inflammatory toxins are secreted by the tissue. What patients feel to be fatigued is the result of these internal chemicals. So I like this definition because it gives credence to the fact that this is a chemical process. It is a legitimate thing happening inside of our bodies. And so again, it's not just in our head as people like to make us feel and believe. So going on to identify conditions that could possibly cause fatigue, right? So we talked about one early on, anemia, which we know that is a lack of iron. Other issues could be low blood sugar, thyroid problems, depression, which a lot of us, including myself, have dealt with, um, lack of sleep, lack of exercise, which if you're battling with stress and depression, um, exercise isn't going to be something that you're going to be rushing to do. But it also points to vitamin D deficiency. And research indicates that vitamin D deficiency has been linked to both exhaustion and depression. And so I found that to be interesting because if you've been seen by your doctor and everything else checks out, right? Your um, anemia levels are on point. Your vitamin B12 levels are on point. You don't have any issues with your thyroid or all those other things that we just mentioned have been ruled out. It may be worth talking to your doctor to see if you don't have a vitamin D deficiency. Um, and the reason why I brought that up is because again, going back to my experience earlier this year, during my healing process, we had gone through the gamut of everything. Iron was good, B12 was good, and I was still finding myself incredibly exhausted. And like I said, my therapist mentioned, hey, why don't you talk to your doctor to see if this is the case? And at that time, this was maybe around, I don't know, February, March of this year. And if you guys have been following me, you know, at that time I was dealing with like asthma issues, respiratory infections, all these other things. And I was just tired of going to doctors. I was just simply tired of going to doctors. And so what I decided to do was a little anecdotal experiment with myself. So I came home and I want to say maybe March. April did some research online of different brands of vitamin D, different potencies, and I found one that I liked. And in March, I started um, taking the vitamin D and keeping a symptom journal. And initially, I was going to do it for about you know, 30 days, four weeks, six weeks, but it ended up being closer to about six months. And I have to say, after about two months in, um, I started to feel better. I was sleeping more soundly through the night. I was finding that I didn't have to stop and take as many naps during the day. And ironically, during that six month period, um, I actually did have a follow up doctor's appointment where my vitamin D levels had been drawn and checked. And they did come back normal, but they were on the very low end of normal. So at least for me, anecdotally speaking, that was some confirmation in my mind that previously my vitamin D levels may have been a little bit low and that by taking them and incorporating them um, may have helped to boost that and to eliminate some of that fatigue. I know for sure, symptom wise, it helped me out a lot and there was noticeable improvements over the months um, in which I took them. So I just want to point out too, again, giving more credence and scientific evidence, there was a, a study done in the North American Journal of Medical Sciences. So what this study did was looked at 174 adult patients who presented with both excessive fatigue as well as chronic medical conditions. Um, there were a number of assessments and questionnaires given, and those who were found to have low vitamin D was given this therapeutic protocol of vitamin D for about five weeks. And at the end of the study, what it showed was that low vitamin D was present in 77.2 of the patients who presented with fatigue. Fatigue. And these patients also presented with chronic illness as well. After normalization of vitamin D levels, fatigue symptom scores improved significantly in all five subcategories of fatigue assessment questionnaires. So um, I'll put the link in the description if you want to go read, you know, the full study. But again, more scientific proof that 
vitamin D deficiency could possibly be a potential cause of your chronic fatigue if all other factors are in check. So again, in, in looking at my own experience, obviously I am not a doctor. This is um, not intended to be medical advice, but rather information and education and anecdotal testimony about my own experience with um, chronic fatigue and how vitamin D helps to improve those symptoms. And again, if you're going through that, it may be worth talking to your doctor um, about that. Um, but I wanted to, before I close, get into something else. This is going back to the article at the EFA. And it talks about why fatigue often goes unnoticed as a symptom of endometriosis. And you guys know we spend so much time on the physical aspects, the bleeding, the cramping, the spasming, the painful uterine contractions, and all of those things. But I love what it says here, and that is one woman, why women with endometriosis related fatigue do not discuss this symptom, as is the case with other endometriosis symptoms, a stigma surrounds it. They say a patient is usually listened to when they state that they are in pain. However, being tired may not receive the same attention, but people may consider the patient lazy, out of shape, or feel that the person has no valid reason for being tired. I mean, come on, how many of us have heard that? I posted about that a couple of weeks ago when talking about endo belly. People think that we're lazy or we're just making up excuses or we're just seeking attention. And this is all information, hardcore evidence that that's not the case, that we are legit going through a thing. It also says here, the last thing one wants to hear when they are suffering fatigue due to endometriosis is that they're being lazy or that it is all in their head. And you guys know, that is my tagline. That is my mission. That is the whole reason why I advocate. You are not alone. You are not crazy. And what you are experiencing is not all in your head. And now we have proof of that. And it wraps up by saying, that is why it is important to be an advocate for one's own health. If something is wrong, women must be unafraid to speak up and voice themselves to their gynecologist. Well, and of course, we all know that most gynecologists are not adequately trained to deal with even the physical aspects, let alone um, the mental and emotional and other aspects such as fatigue, which is why it is so very important, important to find an endometriosis specialist who is versed and trained and educated and has experience in treating all the facets of this disease, not just the physical part, the disease, the tissue itself. Now, our endo bestie, Samantha Bauck, you've heard us talk about her plenty of times on the channel. We even have a couple of videos. I'll link the descriptions up top there to videos that we've done in the past. She's the author of Living with Endometriosis, The Complete Guide to Risk Factors, Symptoms, and Treatment Options. And in her book, she also gives anecdotal experiences discussing her um issues with low vitamin D as it relates to her fatigue. And she talks about how she had a battery of different tests done by doctors and everything was normal except that her vitamin D levels were too low. Um, she then goes on to talk about how working with her doctor, she increased her vitamin D intake from 5,000 to 10,000 units daily, and that seems to have helped her fatigue as well. Again, just more validation from other endo peeps who have gone through this, experienced the same type of thing, and to let you guys know that what you're experiencing is not, again, it's not all in your head. So those are pretty much my thoughts on endo fatigue and the vitamin D connection. I'm going to put all the links to the studies and the articles that I talked about down below in the description. So if you have been experiencing constant chronic fatigue, and again, your thyroid, B12, anemia, if all those other factors are in, intact and you've never had a test done for your vitamin D, talk to your doctor. Go have a test done and see where your vitamin D levels are at. And if they are low, talk to him about a possible possible, you know, regimen. And again, not a doctor, but just from self-study and research, I think on average, the number of units um, to take consider for daily supplement is about 5,000. But generally when you're low, they'll put you on 
like Samantha referenced, 10,000 a day, or sometimes they'll give you one, this huge 50,000 unit pill for you to take one time a week, but you can discuss those particulars with your doctor. When I did my self-study, I found a 5,000 unit pill and I took two of those a day for about six months. So let me know down below in the comments what you think. Have you been educated, enlightened, and empowered by this video? Did you find out some information that was helpful or useful? If so, again, don't forget to like, subscribe, share this video. We want to pass along as much information that can help other endo peeps as possible. Um, again, my name is Michelle Johnson. I am Miss Fighting Fiercely. And if there's a topic, something specific that you guys want me to talk about or an issue you want me to research and bring you my thoughts about, let me know down below in the comments. I'll be sure to check those out and get that to you as soon as possible. And I think that is all for now. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for supporting this community. Love you guys. And as always, be educated, be enlightened, be empowered. And you know what it is. Keep fighting.